Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with another Hearthstone Arena video. The last video was a really good one. Ended up going way higher than that Warlock deck deserved and started off a pretty good Priest deck. Although I do notice that in addition to Shadow Word Death, this deck is actually missing another key card, Velen's Chosen. That's the three mana, give a creature plus two, plus four, and plus one spell damage. I think that card actually joins the rank of really want to see this card in all of your drafts joining you know such hallowed things as shadow word pain and holy nova which this deck does have i do have mind control which is nice as insurance so that i have at least one out if the opponent plays a big minion but if the opponent ever plays two big minions this deck is, is going to have some trouble well anyway let's see what's happening in this next game joey wheeler the shaman i wonder if that's this guy's real name all right the infiltrator pick is good Glad I chose that in the draft, and Sengen would be great on turn 4, but I can't risk having nothing on turn 2 and on turn 3, so I really should mulligan. I don't know, we got a pretty good pretty good set of circumstances here. The Anoyotron's uh, not too bad against Shamans. There is the risk that he'll play the, uh, or he'll flip a 1-1 totem and then have a free popping of the shield, but I'm willing to take that chance. It's just a very good card in general. And this, of course, is a good totem sweeper as well, as long as he doesn't flip the 1-1. Uh... L Lightwell. God, I mean, that, that was just a bad pack. I don't remember if there was anything else in this pack, but I it must have been junk for me to take Lightwell. I think I would actually take the... Okay, I know I'm mispronouncing it, but the Kizan Mystic over the Lightwell, for sure. I really improved my esteem of that card in the last run, and look at that, a 3-drop. Well, what started out as a pretty mediocre hand is actually... Well, minus the 1-drop, which was in the, hair, in the hand of, in the beginning... I top decked into this, and then I top decked into that, so things are looking good. He's got a very slow start here. He actually has the coin and has not played anything on turn three, which is really uncommon. You almost never see that. Now, I could attack the totem and then heal it up and play light well, but the light well would be wasted. I'm going to suffer the damage on this thing and uh, hit him in the face and kill off his little totem. So now, um, with the Dark Iron Dwarf here, I do have the opportunity to... Oh my god, seriously. <laughs> I do have the potential to buff this up and have it attack twice, which could be strong. Oh no, are you going to Lightning Bolt that? Oh my god, that sucks. I could have actually popped this and killed that and everything with the Dark Iron Dwarf. Instead, he actually catches back up. I'm in somewhat of an annoying situation now. Dark Iron Dwarf doesn't help me at all here. Um, I'm going to play the Tiger... And, yep, I'm just going to suck it up and lose my Infiltrator to that guy. I think waiting would have been a little bit greedy. Wow, that Mind Control attack really brought him back. I think I was going to have four minions on the table no matter what, so I guess he gets away with it. Man, Totemming again. Holy crap. All right, so he can go my Sengen off now. I will get to kill his Flame Tongue and play a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, boy, I don't know. This game could definitely be going better, so let's... Give my tiger a massive health bonus. Kill the flame tongue. He's been playing very slowly, so he's got a really high chance of having a hex. Am I really going to lose this game? I actually might. Ah, there's the... No! He doesn't have hex! Oh my god. Well, that is fortunate. So let's see here. I, c I could actually heal this up to seven. That's totally worth it, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely worth it. So we're going to heal this... Hit that. I'm gonna kill this thing because that stops it from killing off my tiger. I think it's worth it. Now I could play a light well and try to heal up one of my creatures, but there's a chance it'll actually heal me instead, sort of wasting it. And then it also stops me from playing a shredder. I could play Holy Nova just to heal the team, but I should have done that before I attacked into the 1 1. So we're gonna just play Piloted Shredder then. And see, he's got seven cards. I know he doesn't have Hex, or he would have definitely used it on the tiger last turn. Let's see what he's got here. Another Fire Elemental? That's kind of what I would expect from this asshole. Alright, Fire Elementals McGee is the reason why he was playing absolutely nothing for the entire first half of the game. Alright, Raid Leader is actually solid here because it um, allows me not to have to use the Dwarf on this, but I'm going to probably end up playing the Dwarf anyway. So we're going to play Raid Leader. Hopefully not get Doom Guard, or Doom Sayer. Oh, wow, ha, that was convenient. Alright, going to give a Dark Iron Dwarf mostly for the body, not because I'm actually trying to burn this guy out. Alright, I've got a pretty big board here. Lightning Storm won't save him. Hex, even at this point, won't save him. Let's see what he's got. Another Fire Elemental, I reckon. No! Not a Fire Elemental, but a Violet Teacher. So, a Hex now? Coin for a student. Okay. And a Hex. 
Rockbiter? Oh, that's not what he wants because Rockbiter causes him to have to take damage to kill something. Okay, so that's four mana. Maybe a defender of Argus here. All right, I guessed correctly, as I so often do. Can I kill him here? Let me think about this. I can do Holy Nova to clear off this taunter. And then to kill the Violet Teacher, I'm going to need to throw away the Dwarf, so then I have 9 damage. But then the Holy Nova does the remaining damage. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to Holy Nova here. Use the Dwarf. Bangity, bangity, bangity. And at full health, and not even that behind on cards. That was a pretty good start to this video. Finish off a daily quest. It's uh, quite fortunate that that guy didn't have anything for the first three turns. It is very, very rare that someone with the coin will actually do their hero power on turn two and on turn three and play nothing on turn one and have no removal for your guys. That's, that was pretty lucky. So I'd say that while he wasn't the uh, Saturday afternoon casual player that we've seen in recent videos, he uh, definitely didn't really do much. His deck was fine with Violet Teacher, Defender of Argus, two Fire Elementals and a Rock Fighter and a Lightning Bolt, but he just didn't do anything for too long. All right, up against a mage, freeze, <laughs> freeze mage. Oh my God, I bet everybody makes that joke. Okay, so we have here an arcane golem, which is pretty much always unplayable on turn three. And I'm actually gonna mulligan the light. Well, oh God. So if she doesn't play anything for me to use shadow word pain on, then I'm gonna regret mulligan the, mulliganing the light. Well, so for that reason, I will actually just go ahead and keep it. Mind control. Oh, well, okay, that's, that's a dead card. So this opening hand's not quite as good as the last one. Can I get a Worgen Infiltrator? No. All right, well, I will uh, coin out the Novice Engineer. This, you know, encourages her to spend her time pinging this thing instead of doing something useful with her life. And given how glacially slow this hand is compared to the last one I had, I really do want to encourage her to be slow about things. No chugger. Well, that is worth using Shadow Word Pain on. The question is, do I do it now or do I play the light well? Oh my god, I have a lot of mechs in this deck, but none here. Lightwell, tragically not a mech. Novice Engineer, also not a mech. So if I use the Shadow Word Pain here, I won't have it in the future, but I think I, gotta, I just gotta do it. And I think I'm gonna be playing this guy as a 3 3 for 3, by the look of it. It will suck if she plays a Water Elemental, because Shadow Word Pain is a great answer to that, but I just, I just can't really afford to let, you know, leave creatures alive. I can play light well here, but it doesn't really do anything, so we are going to play this. Hit her in the face. And then the Ogre Brute, you know, we'll just be able to kill this guy, which sucks a lot. Of Dongs, and I've got six drops, but nothing on turn five. Yeah, this game's not going well. Is, is the coin going to flip? It does. Okay, that's good. Even hits me in the face, which is perfect, so both my creatures get to live. She plays Water Elemental. Okay, well, don't have any more Shadow Word Pains in this deck, so nothing I can do about it. I think I'm actually gonna trade my two creatures in to kill that thing. Senjin technically will take down a water elemental. They can each attack each other twice and they both die, but it's unlikely that'll actually work. Alright, I got nothing to do on this turn except to heal my Senjin, which is a little bit embarrassing. Can I get a playable card? I can, alright, sweet. So we'll heal this up. Uh, I don't actually want to give her a light wall if that's mirror entity because I don't want this thing getting healed So I will give her a leper gnome instead It is a thing, okay Play a light wall and pass the turn So now she could run in with the leper gnome and then ping this to kill it off But if she does that I'm pretty okay with it because that's her spending a third of her mana not doing anything better Now I have a bunch of six drops in mind control so if I can live um, I actually might be okay this game Got a big removal, that would be my entire turn using this. So that's why I would love her to ping this, that decreases the odds that I would f feel compelled to use Holy Fire. Maybe I should have given her a light well, I don't know, hard to say. All right, I'd love to mind control that ogre, but... Whoa, whoa, oh yeah, so she spent all of her mana um, playing the ogre, so she didn't have enough to ping. Um, uh, Sunwalker and the Temple Enforcer both have their merits. Sunwalker holds up decently against the Ogre, but of course she can ping off the Divine Shield. Temple Enforcer would let me buff the Lepernome and then kill her Lepernome and keep mine. 
I think that's actually the move. Even though the Boulder Fistoga can kill the Temple Enforcer and lift us hell about it, I think I have to do this because then my Lepronome sticks around to kill it off. Whereas if I play the Sunwalker, she can just ping off the shield, kill it, and then my Lepronome will trade with hers and I won't have any way to finish this thing. Yeah, Boulder Fistoger was just extremely solid right there. I don't have any easy way to deal one damage with this deck unless I like play a wolf or a raid or play a raid leader or a dark iron dwarf and let the light well sacrifice itself. She has six cards to my seven. Well, one of them is about to die, so she has six to six and the play. So she's in the lead. My board sucks right now, but uh, there's a chance that if we go long, I can actually get back into this with mind control. I just need to hang on for dear life. Aging Morgan's pretty good. That's nothing special, but it's okay. And she's gonna ping the light well. All right, let's see who the light well heals up. Myself, that's fine. Piloted Shredder is a really good card, but I think I just gotta play Sunwalker and the Infiltrator here, and then throw the Leper Gnome to the Boulder Bestoger. So. This is a decent board. If she doesn't have a Polymorph, she can ping it and throw these two guys at it to kill it, but that would be a major victory. My hope is that she doesn't have Polymorph and does that. That would be really terrific. She has six cards to my six. What to do? She's really thinking about her play. Freeze Mage. Hasn't played any freeze spells, luckily enough for me. All right, looks like she's going to play a Noitron Pignus. Is she going to throw these two creatures at it, or does she have a Dark Iron Dwarf? No, she's going to choose not to actually do anything. Hmm, is that the right move? I'm not sure if that was the right move on her part or not. I'm not sure. Because... Fine, I'll throw the Infiltrator away. Do that. Heal up. Play Mr. Shredder and the Anoyatron myself. And now I'm pretty safe against Flame Strike. This lives, this lives, this lives, and this respawns. So that's pretty good. She can, of course, use these to like mop some things up, but I should be okay. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I should. I. She could have run this in, turn on Wind Fury, ping this to death. Yeah, that was a mistake. I should have actually not let her, not play this Anoyatron out. I should have just uh, passed. Okay, so now she can actually turn on Wind Fury against the Anoyatron and then attack something else. Uh, I shouldn't let that happen. I don't know what I was thinking. Whoops. Alright, so she has Wind Fury and I don't have an immediate answer to it. Okay. So what we're going to do here is think. I could heal this up to at least turn off Wind Fury, but she can always ping it to turn it back on. I can play the Pine Size Summoner, but that will just then... So actually, the right answer is to play this but not heal her guy. I could, I could holy fire it. You know what? Let's just holy fire this thing. All right. I waste the heal. I lose the potential to kill something big later with it. But I've got mind control, so I think I just had to go for that. Shouldn't have played a Noyatron. That if I lose this game, that will be the the mistake that made me lose. Okay, like novice engineer, not going to get mind controlled. You my Archmage Antonidas definitely getting mind controlled. Okay, well, that was a bold move on the opponent's part, knowing that I've had this card for a while. But okay, we'll steal that up, kill it. And I don't have enough mana to heal this, so this thing is going to get pinged. I don't have any spells, so I'm not going to get any fireballs. If she has a fireball or a polymorph, she can just get rid of this and be back in the game. But I had to steal it. I just I couldn't not steal it. So no fireball. Interestingly, does she have a polymorph? 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 Four mana left. No polymorph. All right. Well, let's see if I get a spell. If I top deck a spell, I don't know that I have that many spells in this deck. I could be in really great shape. All right. So what we're going to do is I think, play out our stuff here. Well, hang on. I'm going to kill this. The question is, do I want to heal this guy? If I heal him and I play the arcane golem and kill that, then she can ping the golem to death. Or you use the spider to kill the golem. But you know what? I really want to keep this guy around, so I'm going to actually heal him. Now, I can either keep the golem on hand, or I can play it. I'm going to play it, use it to kill the mana addict. Now, she can, of course, kill this with her choice of spiders or pinging, but I wanted to keep this guy as health as high as possible. 
She has Flame Strike, which will allow her to kill the Archmage and pop the spiders. And she's got Zombie Child. Okay, so we have a top deck war situation here. She's in the lead because she has, of course, a couple of spiders and I have nothing. I do have the first play, but if it's not a good one and I've already seen a couple of six drops, I could fall behind. Well, Thought Steel is a pretty good card in a top deck situation. I got this, which is definitely really good. Now this thing, playing it right now, it'll just die to Zombie Chow, seems sort of pointless. So I'm gonna wait and see if I can maybe get a better chance for it, maybe after I Holy Nova. What is she top deck? Silvermoon, Silvermoon Guardian, not bad, for sure. Can't quite kill Zombie Chow with this Gorobashi, unfortunately. But I've got full health and a long time to get some answers. Light Spawn's pretty decent. Although, um, she can kill it off in a relatively easy fashion. I'm actually going to just kill a spider. Uh, and I think I'm going to actually drop this Micro Machine now. If she had killed it last turn, it would have just been a waste. But now, if she kills it, that's less resources that she's throwing at the Light Spawn. So I think it's important to uh, throw that out there as a distractor. Bomb Lobber is extremely good here. Kills the Micro Machine. I guess it's better that than the Gorobashi or the Light Spawn. Alright, so this Gorobashi, I'm gonna, I'm kind of relying on it to take me all the way because it's a 5-7 that's gonna get bigger and it's gonna be able to kill her stuff off one by one. And I have plenty of health, so I just need a good card, a good supporting card here. Noitron is solid. Definitely solid. So we're going to kill off... I'm gonna kill off this in case she has a panda. Heal it back up. So I've got an 8-6 now. She can kill the Annoyatron by pinging it and throwing the Silvermoon Guardian at it. But this guy will just mop everything up if she doesn't find removal. Mad Scientist is not removal. She might not even have any secrets at this point. So I'm going to leave it alone because I don't have any reason to kill it right now. I want to kill that thing off first. But it's looking good. Can I get a Holy Nova? Actually, that would be terrific. Ah, Raid Leader doesn't really do anything. But I am going to play it. Just so that... Uh, I have something to trade one of her minions with. She could actually throw these two guys and ping to kill my Gorobashi finally, and then it's a raid leader versus a spider. If she were to top deck a removal spell or like an Argent Commander or something, that would be very good for her. I would let her kill this and actually start to take off into the lead because my Holy Nova's buried in the last third of my deck. All right, so she throws the Mad Scientist away. Does she have a secret in there? doesn't. Okay. I do get my five health back, which is great. And what is this last card of hers? A Sunwalker! Oh, no, that's really good. I have no answers to Sunwalker. Zero. None at all. Sunwalker means I lose. Shoot. Northshire Cleric. Am I ever going to heal one of my minions? Nope. So I'm just going to play it. You pass the turn. Shoot. Sunwalker was a really good draw for her. I don't have any more mind controls. I don't have anything that will kill this abuse my holy fire well that mistake though of uh playing a noyatron in front of a raging organ probably cost me this game because if i hadn't done that i wouldn't have needed to holy fire her organ so it would have been a better situation all around spider tank is i mean it's spider tank shoot well it was a good fight but i think it's over now she had an ogre she had son walker I had a Temple Enforcer and a Sunwalker, but her big minions did better than mine. Violet Teacher is incredibly good here as well. Holy Nova is just too late. I needed Holy Nova earlier, so I would. So if, so if I had been able to. Um, she didn't. Okay, let me start that sentence one more time. If I had um, been able to keep that Gorobashi Berserker, because she didn't have any removal, I would have been fine. But she was just able to kill it really, really inefficiently, and then I wasn't able to build up enough advantage while she was doing that, because my minions were too weak. Had I, um, had I drawn Holy Nova and I could have cleared her board, then she wouldn't have had the kill for the Gurubashi and it would have won me the game. So that was close. I misplayed a little bit. I would have won if I would gotten Holy Nova. I didn't get Holy Nova, so I lost. And that was that. Uh, one moment, please. Sorry for that break, folks. Let's continue on. We're playing against a warrior here. I got a pretty good opening hand. I have a Leper Gnome here on turn one, turn two, and a Raid Leader on turn three, which is really solid. 
That can let the Anoyatron do extra damage, which might let it trade up with something better than it's used to. And even the Leopard Gnome, if it sticks still around then, which it might be because of Anoyatron, could trade up into a 3-drop, which would be really strong. So, again, I got a pretty good opening hand here. Uh, is he going to kill that with Inner Rage? He is. Alright, that's a pretty good use of Inner Rage, which is a pretty mediocre card. He trades one for one with one of my creatures. So, it's not getting him ahead on cards, but it is just pretty solid for him. Alright, so now we have the Anoyatron, which is a Goldshire Footman, but better, because it's a mech, and because it has Divine Shield. He has nothing on turn two, which is really good. And I have a choice here. I could play the Raid Leader and kill the Goldshire Footman, or I could play the Technician, which will give me a spare part, and um, if later on this Anoyatron were to die, I'd lose the opportunity to get this guy to be buffed. So, let's think. If I play the Raid Leader and I kill this, they both die to Cleave. And this guy's mediocre. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take the spare part here. Which is... Not the greatest spare part ever. And do I want to run this in or not? Popping the Divine Shield. I'm going to do it. He didn't do it on his turn, which makes sense. I'll do it on mine though, so I can try to work this guy down with the Anoyatron. Alright, Corcoran's will lead a pretty good card here. It'll kill my Anoyatron. And it will also trade with my Technician later. I also can't kill it with the Shadow Word Pain. So I could put the Technician back into my hand, but that seems a little bit greedy. What I'm going to do instead is... Hit that guy. Play the Raptor. Heal him. And just accept the fact that the Corcoran Elite was really good. It got to trade with two of my creatures. I still came out ahead because I got to kill off his Goldshire Footman. But that Corcron was very, very solid there. Good use of the coin on my opponent's part. Alright, Senjin is pretty good to see here. I'm really glad that wasn't a Yeti. Although I would have liked to play the Pilot of Shredder. Shadow Word Pain is definitely worth it here. We can then play Raid Leader and hit him in the face. Maybe good or bad, depending on whether I can trade the Raptor for it. And, okay, he's going to get two cards out of this Acolyte. And, actually, both of his creatures trade with both of mine, so that was pretty good for him. Hmm. I could just save the Raid Leader. And use the Raptor to trade that, and then play the Gnomish Inventor. To get a card and try to kill off the Cruel Taskmaster. Or I could just accept that these things trade with each other, I go down a card, and then I just play the Piloted Shredder. Ah oh, man, that was a really good timing for the Taskmaster. Alright, so I'm going to let him have his other card. I'm going to save that Raid Leader. I don't see any reason to throw Raid Leader away for a cruel Taskmaster, so I'll put this back in hand. I could have used that Time Rewinder later on the Gnomish Inventor to get an extra card. I decided to take a risk that um, saving this minion is better than maybe getting a card later for 4 mana. Well, 5 mana if you count the cost of the... If you count the cost of the Gnomish Inventor her herself. He's actually got a Stone Tusk Boar, which with the Hob... Oh my god. Jesus. What a combo. You would never really expect to see that. So he pops the spiders. Is he actually going to kill them off now? Cruel Taskmaster, holy mother of Mary. There is just no stopping this guy. Well, I guess I'm going to play Gnomish Inventor first. Thought Steel is interesting, but not worth it. I'm going to play the Spider Tank and kill this one. I could have played Raid Leader and killed the 2-2, but then the Raid Leader would have died to this epic Hobgoblin. So, I didn't really see the point of doing that. Might as well hang on to this raid later and play Thought Steel later on, try to get something better. Oh my god, he actually has another thing for that. Are you kidding me? Well, losing to MVP Hobgoblin is the name of this game. He's actually using a pretty loose execute, which I can't blame him for, because he's got such an advantage here, he might as well. I can deal, what is this, five damage to that thing? Bring it down to four, raid leader doesn't quite kill it. All right, well... Sunwalker arrives at a pretty good time. I'm actually going to hit this Warden and heal up my Gnomish Inventor. These are the kinds of things you got to do with Priest to try to get some advantage against a 3-9 Taunter with no drawbacks. 
Holy mackerel. Does he actually have more one toughness minion? He actually does. This guy actually drafted the Hobgoblin deck. I cannot believe it. That is so bad, and yet it is working so well. Well, the good news is that this is double-edged. It might help me as much as it helps him. we got to really think carefully about how to use this thing. So I could play Raid Leader, run the Sunwalker in, pop the shield. It'll damage everything by one. That doesn't really help me at all. All of his stuff survives. I don't have any damage. So I could play the Temple Enforcer just to get a really big guy down, or I could Thought Steal try to find a better thing. All right, I'm going to Thought Steal, see if I can get a better answer from his deck. We've got an Egg and a Kodo. Well, the Kodo will kill something. Either the Squire or the Hobgoblin does not quite kill the Warden, unfortunately. The question is, do I want to do that or do I want to play Raid Leader? If I play Raid Leader, I can deal 5 damage to that. Ah, uh, it doesn't seem worth it. Mmm, boy. If I play Raid Leader, I can kill this in one hit without having to throw the Gnomish Inventor away. But if I play the Enforcer, I get a 6-6. Six, six. Man, that's a tough call. Alright. I'm going to... I could also still play a Holy Fire, actually. Damage this down to six, pop the shield. Can't quite kill it, though. All right, I'm not sure if I'm making the right decision, but what I'm gonna do is, in the name of just having the biggest board possible, I'm gonna throw away my Gnomish Inventor and, and get this, raid, or this uh, Temple Enforcer down. Taking an unnecessary damage on him for absolutely no reason. I should've just waited until afterwards. He has another Korokon Elite. And a Dread Corsair. So I've got, he's got a lot of little things. I have a couple of biggish sized things. He's going to trade that there. Gonna trade th okay, so it doesn't matter that I wasted health on that. Alright, I think I might actually be okay here. Because now the smoke is cleared. I'm going to play the Kodo to kill off this Hobgoblin, finally. And I'm actually just going to... I could have played the Egg and the Raid Leader. But I think I want to just play this Dwarf, because it's the biggest thing I have in my hand, and it'll actually kill either of his creatures. So either of my two creatures kill either of his two. I've got three cards in his hand to his one. So somehow I managed to be okay in all this. All right, this is a big dude. Doesn't quite die to Holy Fire either. But I think I'm in pretty good shape here. Especially since I just drew Sunwalker. Alright, we'll play the Sunwalker, the Egg, heal my face, put him in his face, and this game, which was looking so bad, and he got epic Hobgoblin combos going left and right, is actually going to be fine. I would be very hard-pressed to lose this now, and, and so it looks like, because he kind of had a lack of solid removal and just a bunch of minions, uh, me playing big stuff was, was sufficient to win. Right, Arcanite Reaper is delightful to see here, because it's really not going to help him out very much. It'll kill something that I play, but I still am doing fine on cards. Alright, Anoyotron is a really good answer to the Arcanite Reaper. So, we'll play the Raid Leader and think. Do I want to throw this egg away while I have the chance? I think so. So, let's throw it away. Just to get the 4 4. Heal my face. And now he's in a bit of a pickle. Anoyatron is just fantastic against both this weapon and the Ventrico. So a 5 mana weapon and a 5 mana minion are all being owned by a 2 mana minion. That's why I love Anoyatron. Well he says well played. He loses the Ventrico Mercenary and the weapon. And plays Lepernome, which is the kind of top deck I would have wanted my last opponent to have. We now have 5, 10, 12, plus 5 is 17 damage on the nose to win the game. Alright, another solid performance for this deck. So, we now... So we began this video at 2-0, now we're at 4-1, so I have won two games and lost one. Which is pretty good. I think we've got time for a couple more games in this video. If we're calling it Yonder Day. Mm. I do think this deck would be better with a Shadow Word Death, for sure. And it would have been better with another copy of Shadow Word Pain and Holy Nova. Velen's Chosen would have been nice. So just some of the more, a few more key cards would have been good here. Up against another Shaman, Greg. 
Last shaman we played in this video didn't do anything and lost. And then his cavalcade of fire elementals wasn't good enough. Here we have a slow hand. I gotta come mulligan those four drops. Gotta keep this in case he has a fast start, of course. And that's one of the few times I mulligan and it just yields solid replacements. The fours get replaced with the two and a three. So here, let's take a look at what he does. If he has a fast start or a slow start, that'll affect how we play. This shaman is not just going to sit around doing nothing. He's going to play something on turn one. He has a web lord. So something with a battle cry is more expensive. Luckily, none of my stuff has battle cries. So here's the thing. I could play the pine size summoner, but the discount doesn't really matter much. It's not going to help me get anything into play. I could play the Anoyatron, but a 1-4 is actually a pretty good answer to a Divine Shield creature. So I will play the Pine Size Summoner, and maybe he'll sweat, he'll play like a Lightning Bolt against it, or do something that he wouldn't have normally done, just to try to get it out of the way. Ah, uh, Lame Dunk Totem. Well, that's just a good answer regardless. Shoot. So I could play the... I'm just gonna play the tank. Tank survives the hit from the Weblord and it threatens to kill the Flame Tongue. Although, a good card here for him, and I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. I didn't want to play Shadow Word Pain. I think that would have been just too slow. Crackle, he flips the coin. Wins the flip. Ouch. That sucks. Alright, so I cannot play the Gnomish Inventor thanks to this epic Weblord. I will, however, play the Tron and the Raptor. So, why am I not using Shadow Word Pain? Well, I'm just trying to get a little bit ahead here. This would let me get ahead because it would pop the shield to deal damage and then the raptor would kill the flame tongue. And he's overloaded so he's got three mana to respond to this. He makes a totem. Hopefully it's not taunt. It's not taunt. Does he have a... What would this be? Forked lightning? Would be pretty good for him. Maybe. Maybe. And no. Okay. Whew. So we managed to get away with murder here. We're going to kill the flame tongue like that. Kill that there. And now I can actually play the Gnomish Inventor. Is it that or the Light Spawn that's more effective here? I think actually the Light Spawn is more effective. I don't really need the cards right now. The board advantage is more important to me right now than the extra card. He's got six cards in a totem. I have six cards. I'm about to draw an extra one. He's got the play right now. I'm gonna silence that up, which sucks. That's just really good for him. Luckily, he's not doing anything else. Can't find a Taunt Totem, which is also good. So, balls. I'm gonna play the Sunwalker here. The Owl will finish off the Anoyatron. We'll take care of the spell damage. So now, um, he wants Hex, obviously, for the Sunwalker. But then I've got two cards coming in and a little bit more board presence. So I'm still in the game, I think, even after he Hexes this thing. He's got a, no Hex, but a Fire Elemental. So here we're looking for Raid Leader to buff up the Sunwalker to be able to kill that elemental off. And there it is. So hang on, always draw cards first. What else would I do with my mana? I would play Gnomish Inventor, so let's do that first. Sunwalker, I have two Sunwalkers in this deck? All right, well, clearly I know my own deck. We'll pop that. There's no point hitting the healing totem, it would just heal itself, so I'm just gonna hit him in the face with that, even though that feels a bit weird. Now I've got a really solid board. He's got six cards and a totem to my seven cards. Another card coming here. I've got some removal and a Sunwalker. This is looking really, really good. Especially now that I'm suspecting he doesn't have a Hex. He makes yet another totem. Spell damage. Lightning Storm. Pyromancer. Okay, Lightning Storm would be really good here. He has a Lightning Bolt. Okay, with the spell damage totem, that will kill off my Sunwalker. However, it doesn't kill off anything else, but he does have a healing totem to heal his team, so I'd say that he came out ahead with that one. Do I have any mechs? I don't. Hmm. I could heal and kill and play Sunwalker. I think that's the move. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll play Sunwalker, kill this up, kill that, kill the spell damage, hit him in the face again. Alright, so a Lightning Storm would be really solid here. It would clear off two creatures and pop a shield. Squire, got a Silverhand Knight, so no Lightning Storm. That's Ready, good. Sir. And a Totem. Making lots of Totems. Finds the 1-1. One, one. Well, the Light Spawn enhanced by Raid Leader is pretty good at getting rid of the 1-1s. One, Let's think here. I think I actually want to play these two guys and the Novice Engineer. So let's play the Novice Engineer first. 
always draw cards first. Holy Fire is not right now, so we play this to get a mech on the table. Then we play this to get a spare part. Let's see what that spare part is. Could be useful. Give a minion a plus one attack. Hmm. That is pretty useful, I think. Yeah, so we're going to give this guy a plus one attack. So I can kill that thing off. Then I will kill this thing off. And I'm not going to throw away minion versus this 1-1 one, one totem. I'll make him prove to me that he can actually get rid of the Sunwalker so he can earn this kill. He plays more swarm creatures, although at this point he really needs more removal than anything else. Granted, if he had Lightning Storm, he probably would have played it ages ago, so I, it just doesn't just doesn't have it. He's either not seen it in his draft or doesn't draw it here. Holy Nova would be really good for me again. Healing my team would be nice, and I could pretty much destroy his ward a bit. Alright, let's take a look what I draw. Not Holy Nova, so let's count. Uh, I might have enough damage to kill him. We have... This is actually hits twice. That's 4, 6, 11... 13, 16, 18, 23, and then Holy Fire. Okay, so always look for the win. Even though the opponent had a lot of health, I had a lot of power, it's always worth checking. Just in case. Yup, yup. And Holy Fire. So that Shadow Bird Pain that I kept never came in handy. Even though he played stuff the whole time, I managed to do well without it. I think... I think I played that pretty well. I think that if I had used the Shadow Bird Pain and slowed down and not taken a chance playing minions to kill that Flame Tongue, I might have fallen too far behind. Alright, so 5 and 1, let's do one more game in this video, and this will leave us at a good stopping point. Either we'll be at 5 and 2, clinging for dear life, or 6 and 1, and on the cusp of greatness. I wouldn't mind another taste of greatness. Greatness always tastes good. Mmm. Up against the druid, C.M. Knights. Is that like M. Knight Shyamalan? What's the C for? I don't know. Alright, we're going to keep the light well here just because I'd rather have it than something I can't play. And then we have a curve, 2, 3, 4. Although, it's maybe not the greatest curve. Light spawns a bit fragile and light well doesn't do anything. What do I have in this deck that could help with light well? Uh, well, I could have a raid leader make it attack. God, that Raid Leader's been pretty useful. Like I say, bad buffs are better than no buffs. Thought Steel could be handy later. Druids do have lots of good cards. And it's... I don't know if this is true, but I would guess that Thought Steel gets better the farther you make it in the arena, because the farther you get, the more likely it is that your opponents have been doing well because they have good decks. Is he going to innervate something? Target Dummy. Oh my god, Target Dummy. Alright, well that's actually fine. I'd much rather see Target Dummy than just about anything. We're going to play the Spider Tank here. And of course, the Spider Tank's going to have to waste a turn killing the Target Dummy before he can kill the Protector, but I still go up a card just because he played that thing. And Sengen's a really good follow-up, so I could be okay here. I think he probably pulled the trigger on this Target Dummy, though. He was protecting it against, what, Wolf Riders? I don't know. Ah, I see, he wanted to buff it up and attack with it. Okay, that's well played. I take everything back. That was solid stuff. So now the target dummy will deal a damage to this spider tank. Alright, so he splits the damage, which is smart. Notice, by attacking my face, he gave a 50-50 chance of the light well healing me instead of itself. So now he's going to get to kill the light well. If he can get past my Sengen Shield Master, of course, which has been around since day one and has been a terrific card since day one. I would like for the Light Wall to heal up the Spider Tank so that I can kill the Shattered Sun Cleric with it. But if it doesn't work out that way, then no big deal. Um, Shadow Word Pain plus Hero Ability might not be a bad turn. Oh wow, he gives me an extra Mana Crystal. That's aggressive. I assume he has a good reason. So the reason is he wants to use Arcane Golem plus Shapeshift to kill Ascension. And then he can kill some of my other stuff as well. Hmm. I'm not sure that was worth it. I guess if he thought he was behind, he took a risk here. I didn't actually kill the Lightwell. Let's see. This time the Lightwell heals me again, unfortunately. 
So I think I'm just gonna keep it simple. Let's just play Sunwalker. Druids are not the greatest at dealing with Sunwalkers. This takes advantage of the extra mana that he gave me from the Arcane Golem. And I'm threatening to go up a card by killing this thing. I'm also gonna get Mind Control a turn earlier in case uh, he plays any of those big trees later on. So it's looking like a pretty good game so far. I wouldn't say I'm running away with it or anything because he still has five cards and Druids can do a lot with five cards. Ogre well, Brute's not the most impressive thing here, because it does just die to the Sunwalker. There's a chance, of course, she can run into Sunwalker and flip, flip a coin flip it and kill the Lightwell with it or something wacky like that, but... Alright, the Lightwell kills its, or heals itself. It's the only target left to heal. Alright, let's think. I think I'm going to actually end up playing Thought Steal here, so let's do that first, see what I get. We got the Bear Cub and then a Wrath, huh? Wrath seems pretty good here. Let's just do it. I don't need the card. I'll just kill that thing off. We'll kill this thing off. Heal it up so it doesn't die to shape shift. And we're in good shape. So now he's got five cards to my seven. And I think my situation has actually improved since last time. I guess you could kill this with a wrath and maybe play a big four drop. That would be a good way to start coming back into things. Benchco Mercenary. All right, that's solid. It does kill my Sunwalker and live to tell about it. I could kill it off with Holy Nova as well. I think what I'm going to do, though, is just flood the board. Oh, I need to oh, God, I picked the wrong mode. Oh, my God, I totally picked the wrong mode. I haven't, I'm not used to playing with this card. I just wanted to attack with my Sunwalker and ended up clicking. So um, it always has taunt. I think the plus health mode is just better than the plus attack mode in, in pretty much all cases. Swipe is not the greatest here, I don't think. Because he's going to have to end up hitting my Sunwalker anyway. He plays a 4-drop for all his mana. Whoa! Pops the Divine Shield. That's very interesting. So you have to figure he's up to something there. If he chooses to pop the shield instead of killing Sunwalker. Hmm, what is he up to? Probably Starfall? Gosh. Alright. I have a chance to... Tr you know, I don't, I don't really understand what he's doing. I but oh okay he's conceding <laughs> i don't understand what he did there but the light spawn now kills the ventrico and then i can shadow word pain the trog and then i have my control so i was probably going to win that game even without the concession all right folks thanks for watching this video please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed it and i'll see you again soon with some more hearthstone take care everybody